Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 41. We are in section 9.2, part 6. In this chapter, we have looked at hypothesis test for the mean mu, which is the population mean. And in section 1, we looked at when sigma was known, which is not a very usual case in real life. And since then, we've been looking at the hypothesis test for the population mean mu when we do not know sigma and when we have to use the sample standard deviation s as its estimate. So let's continue with our pre-recorded video. Welcome. In this video, which is our final video for section 9.2, uh, this is part 3, and we're going to talk about the critical value method for uh, testing hypotheses. So for hypothesis test. Okay. So previously we've used the p-value method uh, when testing hypotheses. This is fine when we have a computer program handy to calculate p-values for us or we know sigma and we can use the z-table. But we found out last time that uh, it's not as easy to use the p-value method with the t-table. Uh, in other words, when we don't know sigma, when we only have the sample standard deviation s to estimate uh, or approximate sigma. So the solution is that we're going to introduce a slightly different method called the critical value method for testing hypotheses. Um, by the way, it doesn't matter which method you use, you're always going to get the same result. These are identical, but um, as far as when they reject and when they do not reject uh, the null hypothesis, okay? But for the t-table, this is going to be uh, a little clearer. It's going to be a little easier to see when to reject and when not to reject. Okay, so let's just dive in and do an example. Now, I chose number 19 from section 9.2. So this is a, a very longly worded uh, uh, question. I didn't write it all down, but I will read it from the book. And it says, uh, snow avalanches can be a real problem for travelers in the western U.S. and Canada. A very common type of avalanche is called the slab avalanche. These, has been, these have been studied extensively by David McClung, a professor of civil engineering at the University of British Columbia. Slab avalanches studied in Canada have an average thickness of mu equals 67 centimeters. Now, remember that we really don't know mu. This is an approximation. So I'm going to add a little squiggly line over the equal sign because they don't really know the true mean. It's saying that the one studied, so the, the, the sample of avalanches that this guy has studied has a mean of 67. That's really not the population mean. But they're trying to tell you that this is a previous uh, value that's been out there and proposed, and we want to we want to compare to that. All right. So um, it says the ski patrol at Vail, Colorado is studying slab avalanches in its region. A random sample of avalanches in spring gave the following thicknesses, and they list out 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 values. And so, um, but they also give you the sample mean, which is 61.8, and that is not inches, that is centimeters. and a sample standard deviation of 10.6 centimeters. We're going to assume that the slab, the distribution of the slab avalanches is approximately normal. Uh, use a 1% significance level to test the claim that the mean slab thickness in Vail, Colorado is different than that in Canada. Okay, so right here we've said the claim. And so that is going to be claim that the mean th slab thickness in Vail, Colorado is different than that in Canada, okay, which is 67 inches. All right, so our requirements check. We're going to do almost everything the same except for one step that we're going to change. So the requirement checks are the same. It says assume that they're normally uh, distributed, okay, so normally distributed, 
whoops, data, whoops, I can't write. <laughs> so we're good because n is less than 30, but it doesn't matter if we start out with normally distributed data. Okay, we need a hypothesis statement. Remember that the null hypothesis, H0, is mu equal to, and now we have to find what value of mu we want to change, uh, compare, and they've said that is 67 centimeters. Versus, now we look at the claim to, f to figure out how to uh, express H1, our alternative hypothesis. And I've underlined the claim that the mean slab different uh, thickness in Vail, Colorado is different than. So mu not equal to 67 centimeters. So different than, not, uh, not equal, uh, yeah, not the same. Those all mean not equal to. All right. Now our test statistic is going to be the same. It's still t observed equals square root of n x bar minus mu over s. So let's fill that in and get the value. So here we had a sample of 16. So n equals 16. So I'm going to take the square root of 16. Then I need x bar, and that is uh, underlined here at 61.8 centimeters minus mu, which is given in our null hypothesis, 67, divided by s, and s is given here as 10.6. So I'm going to get my calculator out, see what I get. I'm going to take the square root of 16, which is 4, times, I'm going to open parentheses, 61.8 minus 67, close the parentheses, then divide by 10.6, which is equal to negative 1.96226, etc. Now I'm using a t-table, so I'm going to go to the and round to the third decimal place. So I'm going to look at the fourth decimal place, which is a 2, so I'm just going to keep the, the this value that's to the left of it. So this is going to be negative 1.962. All right, so my critical region. Now, because this is the critical value method, let's go to the formula sheet that I have provided you. And we go down to chapter nine, hypothesis testing. And then we get to a point that says, um, these tables that say rejection regions, okay? Now, um, we are not going to do this variance or standard deviation. We're not going to get to that this semester. So you can forget about the last table here. I don't know that there's one beyond that. Uh, nope. Uh, let's see. Yes, I guess there is, but um, that's really chapter 10. So... Um, we're going to look at, um, we're not doing paired differences. We're not doing paired differences, so we're not going to look at that one. We're going to um, look at this first table. So this first table is the only one you really need to look at. And we're going to look at HA, or it should say H1. And I thought that I had changed your formula sheet to say that. I'll verify to make sure. Okay. So we're going to look at H1. And we need to find the correct symbol. So we don't have a greater than. We don't have a less than in our hypothesis statement. See, we had a not equal to. Oops. Let me change the color here. We had a not equals to. So we need to find that sign in our, oops, if I can get to it, formula sheet, which is going to be this one, all right? Now, the first column is when we know sigma, and in this case, we didn't. We didn't have sigma. We had S, so that's not the uh, column we need. We want 
the column when sigma is not equal to known or not known. And so this is going to be our rejection region or rejection criteria or the critical region. So uh, let me write this down and then we can uh, go through it. All right. So our critical region is going to be T observed is less than negative T alpha over 2 uh, n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Or T observed is greater than T alpha over 2 with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now, I don't remember if your book uses a parenthesis here or not. Uh, I guess I can find that out pretty quickly to see. Or maybe not. When I want it, it's not there. When I don't need it, it's, it's right there with me. I don't know that they uh, even write it that way. All right. So we're going to say that this is alpha divided by 2. So that's telling us uh, that we need to calculate alpha over 2. And this is telling us that we need n minus 1 degrees of freedom. All right, let me change to blue. Okay, so let me clean this up a little bit. Get rid of some. Oh. I'll write it back. All right, so I can't use both of these statements at once. Only one of these can be true. The key is, is my t observed positive or negative? In this case, it's negative. So I'll only use this side over here. If t observed is positive, we don't need to look at this side or condition. So what I need to do is I need to plug in values for t observed. And for this, I need to find this value. Okay. Well, I know t observed. It's a negative 1.962. So now I need to find this value. And I need, I need to be careful with the signs here. You'll notice that this is a less than. And this one is a, a greater than. Okay, so we need to be careful. Make sure you get it right. Copy it down exactly. Well, that's the end of this video. Please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. If you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. I am very happy to help you, as always. If you can't do that, then you're welcome to email me. But when you email me, I need two things from you. The first is a picture of the problem so that I can help you through email. I may not have the problem available to me. If you don't send me the problem, then you're going to have to wait until I get back to my computer and get that problem pulled up. So please send me a picture of the problem. The second thing you need to send me is a picture of your work so far. This helps me understand how you're approaching the problem and may help me or will help me uh, help you faster and better. So I hope you will stay safe and take care of yourself. Until next time, we'll see you then.